All righty, folks. Welcome back to the show where a hello from people disgusted by your essence means that much more. It is Train Wreck Rules, where we react every week to the newest episode of Vanderpump Rules. So with that said, let me get my co-host in here. Quinster, another episode in the books, and I feel like we got momentum back on the tra- on the Vanderpump side of things. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute. Sorry about that. We didn't get the, we did not get the drama that I was expecting with Tahoe, but we started to see a little bit of the drama starting to come through. Seriously, they knew what they were doing. They're partitioning this out a little bit. You got a little bit of the taste. Sandoval is dipping his feet back in the group water. And so far, people seem to be letting him back in. Are you surprised that the group was kind of welcoming, or do you think this is kind of the, you know, they have to do this for the well-being of the show, so it's kind of a lesser of two evils? Yeah, I think you hit on it all the time with, like, the producer setup scenes. There was a few of those tonight, and I do I think this is part of that. Um, also part of Lisa's plan. Lisa's been pushing everybody to have an open mind and try to get back into this. So it feels a little forced, a little contrived. Um, but at the same time, Sheena has talked about how she's conflicted in this and her long history with Scandaval as this sort of peters out and time passes, I think. All these people do have long histories, and so they're, they're, those wounds will start to heal naturally for them. But, yeah, no, it seems like a lot of it is just the show and, and keeping it forward for the show. Yeah, we've talked about Vanderpump playing the hits as far as segments so far this season, but this was the first episode that really felt like the character interaction was back at those former season levels. Uh, so let's get into it. Obviously, we have episode five of season 11 here, Lake It or Break It, on Train Rock Rules, myself, Maniac, and Aaron Quinn breaking it down. Uh, so first we got, you know, Katie and Ariana looking for stuff or something about her, but, uh, we got Graham reuniting with James and we got Mr. Banks. Are you worried for Mr. Banks in that house, Aaron? That is, might be the most, uh, outside of Scandal versus the group, uh, Graham or was it, uh, Mr. Banks. Yep. Uh, versus Mr. Banks that that's going to be, and also versus Allie. So there's True. this, there Graham versus Allie and Mr. Banks. That might be the hot drama of the season here coming up, especially with the later we got the inside info that maybe Graham had bitten some people and may, maybe it was inside a info there. Inside info. It's, it's, you got your Schefter versus your Rappaports. Uh, you know, uh, Vanderpump is no different. Ah, that's right. But can you trust anything Tom says either? No, no. Anything he comes is a, a grain of salt. It's coming with a, basically a bag of salt. Uh, that's what I'm saying. From Scandal. Uh, so we move along some hilarious lines from Schwartz in this one. He's talking about if the trip to Tahoe is going to be wet, hot American summer, and he doesn't want it to be The Shining, which is amazing. Uh, but the first thing that we saw that has been building a little bit under the scenes uh, so far this season has been Brock and Sheena, a little bit of a schism. And Brock finally kind of Mount, – Mount Brock erupted when they were at a store. You can't argue at a store, Aaron. I don't know, man. I was, I was on Team Brock on this one, dude. Sheena's out of control. Uh, outside of Scandal, she has very much become my least favorite member of the cast. She just, she only cares about herself. She doesn't really, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure there is anxiety with it. I'm a parent. There is some anxiety when you leave your kid behind, but she's taken it way too far. And I'm, I'm very sympathetic to Brock here. Like at some point you got to rein it in and maybe the store isn't the right place for the argument. I do get that, but the way she was talking to him and just like totally dismissing what he was saying, he's right in, in all of this. And then it, he backs down a little bit later in the episode, but it was good to see him stand up for himself. And again, Sheena, because she is, he was right earlier in the season that she surrounds herself with yes people and she needs some pushback here. I think that sh- that he looked a little bit bad because he was basically saying it to her while she was in the dressing room. Like, so like, a, you know, minus a couple points for him, sure. but she was just outright ashamed to even have the conversation because she couldn't acknowledge that he was right and that something is wrong. So Sheena was definitely on the negative there. I agree with you. Um, and then this is quintessential Vanderpump. We get some and some airport, you know, cell phone footage. Uh, obviously, always cool to see. Mm-hmm. Lisa and Oliver at the Big Bad Wolf shoot. Or, or what did you think of Oliver? Pretty cool wolf. Uh, I mean, Lisa's so dope. So everything she does is so over the top, so fantastic. So um, perfect for her, perfect for Tahoe. Uh, and, yeah, what a cool wolf. So in the middle of this episode, uh, and this is something that fans have been pointing out, they're definitely trying to push the Sandoval sympathy arc. Uh, it's pretty clear. Um, your thoughts on it so far as we're five episodes in and you're starting to see a mesh with the group and maybe he's starting to get a little sympathy, honestly, based on the previews. Every time there's like a, sec- a tiny bit of sympathy, he's still 
refuses to fully take any responsibility and always makes it about well, all everyone was blasting me on social media and selling merch and they, how about every, how everybody attacked me nobody wants to apologize to me and at least for me i don't know that i think some of the sympathy from the group is a little forced for the show and you could see that like even James a little bit at the end of this episode came around a little bit, but like trying to have this conversation, like James isn't ready. And even Brock was kind of like, dude, you need to own some of it. Like we want to let you have some what yeah. back into this group, but you've got to own some of this. Everyone's telling him that now. Sheena's told him that. Every James friend has told- given him a way back. It's just a matter of Sandoval's going to take it. And there's going to be some repentance, plain and simple, Aaron. Yeah, he's got to. Yeah, you got to take your dues, man. Um, So that's obviously, again, the big story they're pushing up. The other funny thing is, I mean, did we have a storyline just straight stolen from The Simpsons with Brock uh, washing his stuff and it turns pink? That's definitely something that happens to Homer in the early season of The Simpsons. Now that you say it, that's probably true. And also, like, I do have Brock in my top five. Oh, okay. Here tonight, but he lost a little bit of points in that speedo. No, for sure. I mean, listen, I, well, not many men can pull off that speedo, so kudos alone to Brock. Um, so we got Graham uh, escaping the gulag, a, a great twist, as everyone is excited to see him back. What do you think of the new name? Uh, Hippie. Hippie. Um, well, if Rachel, right? If Rachel can go back, just like Allie was saying, if Rachel can go back, Hippie can have that a new name. That was fair. That was, that might have been, Rachel had, or sorry, Allie had a huge confessional episode. Uh, I wrote that, you know, she writes, she, as she was saying, she couldn't get rid of Raquel when, when the dog came back originally. And if Raquel can do the name change, so can Hippie. I thought she had a great confessional episode for Allie. Yes. Though I, there's something about Allie that I don't entirely trust. She, she like gets a little flirty, in my opinion, with both Schwartz and a little with Sandoval there a little okay. bit. Okay. All right. That would be a crazy development uh, along the way. Lisa Vanderpump, three outfits one day, uh, just pure class, obviously. Raise your glasses and howl to the moon. What'd you think about that toast? I, I might, I might use that the rest of 2024. I thought you would start off the show with that. To be honest, that was good. Well, I could, I couldn't turn away from a hello from people disgusted by your essence. Yeah, that was just too classic. But uh, the, obviously, the, got yeah. Raise your glasses and howl to the moon. Woo! The best quote of the night, though, was, uh, "I never take selfies for myself" by Tom Sandoval. That was good. That was good. Um, the biggest lie ever. Like that is Sandoval in a nutshell. Were right? you cr- like, were you cringing when Sandoval was hitting the wall? Oh, totally. I've ever ran down like what a dummy. This is the wor- yeah. he's the worst. And like Lala sitting there like, dude. Again, same thing. All these people have been saying like, take some of this responsibility on yourself. They're like begging him to do it so they can get him back in the garden. Yeah. yeah, seriously, they just want him to take take his di- what is coming to him for sure. Uh, speaking of coming. Since season uh, or since episode two ended, uh, this conversation has been on its way back, and that is James and Sandoval. Uh, they kind of have it out at the end of the episode, but it seems like they kind of agreed to make peace for the time being. Uh, it seemed like Sandoval didn't get all the way there, but it seems like James has, continues to grow uh, in this season. James is winning this season, I think, uh, so far, and his growth. Uh, I think the sobriety is big for James and not being on the attack all the time. I do think he has confidence in his relationship with Allie, which is also giving him a little bit different of a vibe than we've seen him in previous seasons. And so all that is going to help him be a more mature person in having these conversations and not just getting defensive. But again, man, like that last conversation with Tom, like it just felt like Tom still sort of refused. Like he kind of was taking some responsibility, but was like his excuse for the whole affair or the cheating was like, I was in a bad relationship and I needed to find a way out. And it's like, dude, just break up. Agreed. Like, it's what, it's what, what Sheena doing? said in the, in the extra episode last year. You should just end the relationship and they'll help pick up the pieces, obviously. Dude. Uh, poor job, poor job. Um, okay, well, hey, let's do a good job here. Uh, let's get the episode score uh, for the reaction. I thought this was a solid episode. Um, so with that said, I am going to give it, just to be clear, my past scores were 7.4, 5.9, 7.3, 6.6. I'm going to put this one at a 7.2. I thought this was a solid episode. I was going to say 7.6. Um, probably it's ranking That's your up. top rating of the season. This was a great episode. This, this was my favorite episode. That was episode. number two for me. Yeah, this is my favorite episode of the season because it felt more Vanderpumpy than the other ones. And, like, we're starting to get into some of the drama. And now you got Tom more involved with the group, I think. Yeah. As much as I can't stand Scandaval, his involvement in the group is going to bring the drama that I want to see out of the show. Agreed. So, with that said, the honorary poo-poo head of the night, uh, who do you got? I got. I'm just going to preliminary. I have a controversial pick. Okay. I Well, obviously, Scandaval is always going to be there. 
But my outside of Scandal is the person that pooped on Ariana and Katie's patio at the restaurant has to be the poo-poo head of the night, right? I guess that is the poo-poo head of the night. Technically. Can't lose poo-poo head when you actually poo-poo. Um, with that said, Ariana can't get glasses for the restaurant. Ariana's only other segment to me was her saying that the whole thing of her saying at her house is furniture, Aaron. That's now I'm gonna be honest. I don't have a lot of property. I don't have a, like my own house or anything like that. But the idea of wanting to stay there solely for furniture seems a little bit petty and a little bit silly. And I, I get that we were playing the petty card, but it just seems silly. So unfortunately, I have to do it, and I have to give Ariana for this episode again, strictly based on this episode. Yeah. The poo poo head of the night. Yeah. Yeah, and it's such a scandal. I don't thing. do it happily. I don't do it happily. Scandal had a good episode. He had some. He had. He had the hitting the wall, which is as cringe as ever. But yeah. he did also make some strides. So I can't just. I can't just ignore part of it and then you know go with the other. But the the whole house thing and like, I don't even want to know how much money they spent to hire that woman to like pick <laughs> out furniture for them. Like, what world yes. do these people live in? I don't get. They, oh, a crazy world for sure. Um, let's pull up our Vanderpump power ranking. So we had a nice graphic, but we'll have that for next week. This is our combined ratings of the season. Do we, okay. do we get, oh, I thought we got a Sabres goal. I'm sorry. I was going to update the stream, but overall we got Lisa leading the way at 30. We got James at 26. We got Ariana at 21. So those have been our three lead dogs all season. Uh, why don't you kick it off? Why don't you give me your top five for this episode? Again, as scoring wise, number five for the episode gets one point. Number four gets two. Number three gets three. Number two gets four. Number one gets five. And we'll add them up at the end of the season for a Vanderpump Season 11 champion. This one was tough because you didn't have a lot of Katie and Ariana in here. And Lala didn't do a whole lot. So there's limited choices. So I'll go down here. Number five, uh, Tom Sandoval is getting on the board for the first time for me this year. I'm going to put him in the five slot. To your point, there was some redeeming uh qualities here and just having him back involved in the group in action with the group drinking with the group that's going to bring exactly what i'm looking for out of this show uh coming in at four i got tom schwartz uh maybe one of his best episodes of the year he didn't have any of those like uh they had this guy gives me the creeps a little bit and he's super insincere it was just sincerity and trying to keep the group together uh number three I got Brock. I thought Brock had a great episode coming at Sheena. The way he was talking to Tom, kind of like, yeah, no, we get it, dude. But you got to, you know, still kind of stand in ground with that. Uh, number two is Lisa. I mean, the whole episode revolved around her being in Tahoe, her posing with a wolf, the three uh, different outfits of the night. It's such a Lisa thing. But number one, I've got James Kennedy, man. James is killing it this season. Like I said, he's the number one guy in the group. His life's together. He's doing well. He's maturing, and, and he's living his best life right now. Seriously. Okay, we're a little bit reversed, so I'm going to go into this. James, I give him credit, uh, but I, I kind of went top-heavy on him last episode, so I'm giving him the five spot. This week, I'm giving the four spot to Lala, uh, the growth. I, I, again, like I said to you, sometimes when you don't get a ton of Lala, that's actually a good thing for Lala. Her moment in the episode today was saying that she kind of is leaning toward forgiving Schwartz, not because similar to what Sheena's saying, because, you know, a friend, past relationship, et cetera, like that. But she said because Scandaval has owned it. She said Scandaval has taken accountability for it. Now, is that entirely true? Maybe not. Maybe so. But at least she has a legitimate reason for what she's doing. That always counts for something. Uh, number three, I'm going to go with Brock. I didn't like the blow up in the store, but I did like him taking charge. So I give you credit there. I'm happy about that. Uh, number two, let's see. Hold on. I just want to make sure I got this. Okay. Number two, it's a close one. Ultimately, mm, I'm going to go Lisa at number two. And then at number five, for the second straight week, I'm going to go Graham. I mean, he's back on Vanderpump Rules. He was featured again. I mean, uh, actually, no, these five points are going to go to Hippie. These five points are going to go to Hippie. So if Graham has five points on the season and Hippie has five That's points, right. Multiple personalities. Folks, we will keep the trade rolling. Quinn, so much fun doing these, dude. I know I appreciate you hopping on. I appreciate everyone tuning in. Hey, thanks for having me, man. And go enjoy the Sabres. Let's go enjoy the Sabres. Make sure to go enjoy Picasso's Pizza. Order at any of the locations in Western New York. Go to go to Picasso'sPizza.net for the best deals and the best pizza in Western New York. Go follow Aaron Quinn, Aaron Quinn 716. Follow Trainwreck Sports and make sure to go have a good night now.